Danny Lam Tavis. Danny graduated high school with honors and talked of going to medical school. In October of 2016, Danny committed suicide after facing many years of depression. He was 17 years old. Eileen Jaminian. Eileen was a 17-year-old high school senior who was bullied by her classmates. In March 2016, she committed suicide. She was a semi-finalist for the New York Times College Scholarship. Tyler Clemente. Tyler was a college student who was cyberbullied by his roommate due to his sexuality. In September 2010, he committed suicide. He was only 18 years old. Isabel Medina. Those who knew Isabel described her as a kind, smart, and outgoing girl who brought the best in others. In September 2014, she committed suicide. The reason was unknown. She was only 13 years old. Mallory Grossman. Mallory was a gymnast and cheerleader. After several months of bullying and cyberbullying, she committed suicide this year. Mallory was only 12 years old. When I see headlines in the news and I see someone who had a bright future, you know, just take their life, I'm devastated almost as much as I've, I would be if I knew them. And it, it hurts me to see that that person couldn't get the help that they needed. You hear those names and you know you don't know them but you kind of feel the impact from from hearing that they committed suicide. They just felt like that was the only way out. When I hear the word suicide it's like a taboo but it's a very real thing and it happens all the time. It's a real touchy subject, but it's definitely a topic that needs awareness. I just kind of feel like, you know, sometimes, at least for seeing from like news reports or like stuff like that, I just feel like certain suicides and certain deaths are like, you know, taken as more important, you know. You think about it, even if it wasn't a suicide, it was just like a regular death, like what would be the reception for my death? What would be the reception for my suicide? I want to say like definitely recently like a year ago was like I guess my first like I, I had suicidal thoughts before but definitely like this was like the first like real one for me because like like I said I don't get depressed I just felt like it was so much that like tied into it. I was just so stressed out and I was just like panicking. So I guess like, you know, my value myself is like it basically went up at the end of the high school. Like my, my value and like my view of myself kind of like went all the way up to the point where like, I guess like it just went down. When I got to college, I felt like I dealt with something that like, you know, it's such a shift. College is definitely a shift. You have to be like way more independent and it's way more stressful. Dealing with like, you know, you gain weight after, after high school immediately because you, you don't have gym no more. So you gain weight and like my view of myself like just started like coming down. And um, you know, I would look at myself and like I was gaining like, you know, like fat here and just like, you know, I just felt like, I don't know, just my view and like my value myself, I just didn't feel valuable. So, I mean, by the time I finished, you know, my first year of college, like my second semester that year, it was like so stressful to the point that like I was stressed and I didn't think I was going to be able to get out the semester. Like I just felt like so much anxiety. I don't, I can't even explain it. I haven't felt something like that in like ever since then. I felt like my blood was boiling, like all that stuff until like finally I was done with the semester. So like all summer, I was like so traumatized by that. I was just so scared to come back to like college. So by the time like I was getting closer to coming back, like I started to freak out um, my view. Like I started feeling insecure and I was like, okay, like this is the first time in a while since like my depressed days that I was dealing with like insecurity and stuff. Like I was so high that I wasn't feeling insecurity. I felt like so good about myself. So this was like the first time I dealt with it. It just felt so like intense because like I didn't know how to deal with it no more. You know, back then, like, 
you know, dealing with it every day, you're like, okay, it's another day. Like, I'm down on myself. Um, I'm nothing, whatever. But it's just like when you're feeling so good, you're like, wow, like, I'm the man. Like, I'm, I'm awesome. <laughs> I'm the best. So, you know, going from that to like, like, wow, like, what if I'm not the best? Like, I got into like this deepness of like, like, you know, I had all these ideas of like my future, what I want to do with it. Like, like I said, it was just like a panic attack. Like, I was like, what am I going to do now? Like, I had all these aspirations and all these dreams. And I was like, where do they go? Like, I don't, I can't even see what I'm going to be doing. Like, within the next couple of years, I don't know, like, I'm not making any steps towards like any of these dreams that I have. So it's like, I kind of felt worthless. Like people in my family, like, I guess like my close ones, I was like consistently arguing with them last summer. And just like, I kind of felt like they were kind of putting me down within like the arguments. Like my mother would kind of like make bad comments and like, you know, you just like your father, you're gonna end up like your father, this, this and that. Like to me, that's like the worst thing you could tell me. Like, you're going to, like, my mother knows that, like, I hate that. Like, don't call me my father. Hearing all this stuff, I felt like it kind of, like, brought me closer to the edge. So, like, one day, yeah, one day it just hit me, and I was just like, all right, like, you know, what if I'm not here? Like, you know, I kept having those thoughts for, like, maybe a week or so. I can't say that I had a plan, but I definitely, like, I kept thinking about it. I was like, all right, like, how should I do it? Like, what if I just jump in front of this truck? Like, you know, it's just, I feel like it's like that though. Like a lot of people who deal with suicidal thoughts are like, what if I just jump in front of the train? The way I was thinking of doing it was just walking into traffic. Like I, I was, I had tears in my eyes. I was ready to cross the street and I was just like ready. I just felt like, I felt like what else, what else do I have to live for? Because she was such a big part of my life and, and it really dominated my life. That day, I had made an attempt to go see her, to try to, you know, get her back, try to fix things. And it didn't work out. And I just, I was just stuck. I didn't know what to do. I was gritting my teeth and like, I didn't, I felt like I was gonna do it, but ultimately, you know, I crossed the street. I waited for the cars to go by and um, I let out an exhale and I cried a little harder and I kept going. I can't really say, you know, what was going through my mind too much. I don't remember it that well, but um, definitely I remember like my mother had like Moscato or something in the fridge and like I just downed whatever was in the fridge and like to the point where like I was drunk and um, you know, I kind of like put these pills on my bed and like all this stuff, like I don't have to go in great detail, but I, I remember like writing a note about like all the things that were like bothering me. And um, I mean, it was for like my loved one at the time. And like I wrote the note. And um, to be honest, I didn't know what to do with the note. Like after like I decided not to because basically the note like was one of the main reasons why I didn't do it. Because like I was just thinking about it. And I wrote in the note and I wrote like all a list of names of all these people who like mean a lot to me. And I just thought about like like, what's going to happen if I don't see my little ones? Like, I want to see, you know, my little cousins, like, grow older. Like, one of my aunts actually told me, like, if anything ever happens to me, you have to, like, take responsibility for my daughter. So I'm like, what if something happens to her? And, like, they got to put this kid in a home and stuff like that. And just, like, I guess this view and, like, these thoughts was, like, one of the reasons one of the main reasons why I just didn't do it, I didn't take these pills. I was like, what's gonna happen with my grandmother? Like, I'm definitely a grandma's boy. And like, I can't really, I can't do that to her. Like, you know, have her bury me. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, what always stops me is thinking about the people that I'd hurt. So um, I know people care about me. I'm aware of that. Not everybody knows that but it's important to know somebody does care about you and I can prove it. Even, I, even if you can't point out somebody that cares about you, I can show you someone that cares about you. But I, I knew I would hurt my family. I knew the impact I'd have on other people. Even, even my ex-girlfriend, I didn't want her to go through that. And I would never, I feel like that would have been, I'd rather deal with the pain than have someone else deal with the pain. 
besides that, I still have a purpose here. I'm still young. I still have a lot to do here. I'm not done. So I didn't want to cut myself short. And suicide only eliminates the chances of anything getting better. Suicide uh, is something that you know, is often, I mean, I think that the statistic is something like 90% of cases of suicide can be attributed to some type of a mental health condition. So depression certainly is, you know, one of those conditions that contribute to, that could lead to that. When I think of the word depression, uh, I mean, a lot comes to mind. Um, I guess like, uh, I want to say all the times that I've been depressed kind of comes to mind, but um, I don't want to define it as like, you know, weak, but I feel like depression is like something that could take over at least my life from like all the times that I've been depressed. Like, I feel like it, it uh, stopped me from taking opportunities. So I just feel like it's a, a life controlling thing. It's nothing but negativity. You know, nothing good comes from depression, in all honesty. Depression feels like everything is going right. Think about a moment where everything is going right and you're still not happy. You still can't, you still can't bring yourself to form a genuine smile. Think about how that would feel. Like you don't know where it's coming from. You can't really put a finger on it, but you know you're not happy. And everything around you says you should be. Well, depression essentially is, is it's, it's a mood, uh, as we know. So mood um, can be very um, uh, tied into either experience or it could be tied into uh, one's physical health, uh, emotional health. So when depression happens, uh, as far as what we call clinical depression, uh, it's more than just being sad. Sadness is something that like, it comes, I feel like it, it goes away. It goes away quick. Depression, like you go to sleep depressed, you dream depressed, like you, you wake up depressed, you know? And it's just like a constant like, like, oh, this sucks. Like, for me, it was like, life sucks. Like, Sad is very, uh, it's fickle, it goes away fast. It doesn't last. Depression is an everlasting thing. It keeps coming back, constantly comes back. Sad is just in the moment. Like you could be in a happy mood. It doesn't mean you can't be like in a, a slight, like happy mood, but this is like, it doesn't mean that your life is like happy. It just means like, just like sadness, that like it comes, it goes away, you know, it's quick. If you just can't get rid of those feelings of sadness, um, or you might be especially fatigued for a period of time. You can't seem to get any energy or motivation. You could, for instance, um, have trouble sleeping or wanting to sleep too much. You might have problems with your appetite, uh, either you know not eating at all or eating too much. You might be irritable. You might become isolated or withdrawn. You may not want to you know, hang out with your friends or, or you know, take part in, in social activities. So when those things happen, uh, usually several of those things happen, that's when we can say a person is dealing with uh, depression. I was generally just depressed like most of the time, if not all the time, but like I felt like the depression would intense, like get more intense depending on the situation. So, you know, if like a girl, you know, would like reject me or whatever, like I'll be like sad, like, like back in middle school, like I didn't eat like for a certain amount of time. I, like I wouldn't really drink like I would just sit like there was one day like I get I guess I got rejected or whatever and like I legit just like sat in my room and just listen to like sad songs like depressed like a whole depressed album by The Cure like shout out to my dad for that one but you know um yeah just sad songs depressed songs and just like stuff like that and just like I didn't want to leave my room you know, it was like you could tell, my mother could tell, like, you know, do you want to eat? Nah, you know, I'm just sitting in my room, just laying down, listening to, like, music ever since, like, since I got back home from school. So, like, that's a whole day. Like, that's hours right there until, like, I went to sleep. It was hard to sleep. Like, I was thinking about it. I was obsessing over it all the time, overthinking. Um, lack of energy to do stuff in the day. Even, even when I got the sleep back, I still didn't want to really do anything. Like, I, I didn't want to leave my house for a long time. Um, I couldn't really hold down solid foods, and I was actually hospitalized one time.
because I was dehydrated and stuff and I couldn't really eat. Like, it was weird. Like, I literally couldn't eat. <laughs> so I would try and, and it would j I would just like gag. <laughs> so the only thing I could drink was, I, the only thing I could um, consume was like drinks. So I tried to drink a lot, but after that, it was. Um, you know, one thing we know about major depression is it could be similar to being a paraplegic or quadriplegic where uh, essentially you just have, you know, you're not able to move. It, it could be that severe. There also could be physical pain associated with depression. These are some of the things that people often don't understand or realize, but, you know, depression as well as many other mental health conditions can impact a person's physical health as well as their mental and emotional health. can be partially genetic so uh, like other mental health conditions a person could um, have you know depression uh, or could experience depression as a result of a family member who's had depression to be honest I want to say that like he kind of has mental issues uh, growing up he really was like mentally depressed so um, he would have like these outbursts and it was like constant like guessing games of whether like he was on you know, antidepressants, or like, had he not like stopped taking them? Was did he switch? And even like sometimes when he was on the pills, it would still be like outbursts for like things that I would think as like small as a parent, I would think as like really small. So you know, all these outbursts, and it's just like kind of scary at times. You know, it kind of like um, I guess like I don't want to say it traumatizes you, but like I guess certain situations like did traumatize me and maybe even like family members who have seen these outbursts. To be honest, like sometimes it kind of had a, I guess an effect on me, where like constantly being in this household with a person that's like depressed, like it brings you down, you know? Even like you could be feeling good and you know, either like their nasty attitude or like starting problems, even if they're not like, if you're around a person that's constantly down and has like a negative view of everything, then you're gonna be down too. So that's why like at a certain point, you know, during my teen years, like I was so low on myself that I just felt like, you know what, I gotta cut the, all, all the negative out of my life. So I cut plenty of friends off. This was around the time that like, you know, I kind of became distant from my father. Any major life change? You know that someone isn't able to manage can you know, can cause depression or or even anxiety, which kind of goes hand in hand with depression. So we know that for young adults who are facing these life changes, they really need support during these times to make sure that they aren't um, having difficulty to the point where they they don't know what to do or where to turn or who to talk to. Well, my parents divorced at six, and I think that was the beginning of depression for me. I didn't really understand it. And more importantly, my mom, she remarried pretty soon after. So I think I was still six when she remarried. So that was even harder for me. And um, I thought I wasn't going to see my father as much, but he was still around. I was just sad about it overall. I just didn't want, and I definitely didn't want her with anyone else. So like, it was really hard for me. I didn't really acknowledge it till I got older though. Like I didn't realize that was a, a trigger really. Elementary school, I was, you know, crying like every single day and it was, and I'm not exaggerating, it was like literally every day. So once I got out of that, I got a little better. I started, you know, focusing on school and I was a pretty good student, but it always came back. It, it definitely came back here and there. Sixth grade was a bad year for me. After fifth grade was probably one of the best years for me. And um, seventh and eighth, I was pretty popular. I, I liked my school, but it was still always recurring. Depression for me was the worst for the past two to three years, going through a breakup that pretty much dominated my life. You get so used to someone, they become like a routine, and you have a whole life planned out, and then it just doesn't work out, and you know, obviously that's devastating. We broke up once, and then we got back together, and I was like so happy about that, and I thought, you know, that person was meant for me. And it turns out they weren't, but the way it went about was just, you know, it killed me, so. You know, depression is something certainly that could, if it's left untreated, lead to suicide. Not in all cases, but we do know that when a person is severely depressed, uh, at some point they might end up losing hope. They might end up 
uh, nine to, not wanting to go on because you know the pain is just so uh, significant in their life that they feel there's no way out. They feel trapped. They feel like they they just can't go on. Yeah. And that really is sad and it's unfortunate. But we know that when that happens, um, an intervention an intervention is needed. When I was young. Um, my mom did have me see the school therapist or, or counselor. They weren't called the therapist. Um, I spent a lot of time in that office. I remember that. <laughs> I remember crying with that therapist. I liked her. Well, I keep calling her a therapist, but more of a counselor. I liked her, and uh, she tried her best to make me feel better, and it did help. Um, after that, after elementary, I didn't see an, uh, another therapist until, I gotta say, after college. I mean, after high school. Definitely my mother was always like trying to help I mean, like when I was four years old like I was already saying like crazy stuff so you could tell like right off the bat that like she wanted to help I would say like as a kid I would like not catch a, a ball or something and catch and like I was like I want to kill myself like at four years old like it's kind of crazy so I remember her like bringing me to therapy at that point but therapy is really different when you're that young compared to like other years when you're older. So when I think back to therapy back then, I just, all I really remember was just like sitting down with like a nice lady and like playing a board game. And I was like, okay, like I'm kind of down with this therapy stuff. Like, all right, I guess you would ask me like, you know, how did it make you feel? But I'm like, it's a board game. Like, <laughs> I, I guess it was fun. Like, that's it. Like, you're not really getting deep stuff to me. But I guess like with other kids, maybe, you know, you could ask them like, oh, you know, how the game make you feel? And then you, you go from there. But like I said, at that age, I don't remember giving like really good information. After high school, that's when, um, so after high school, that's when everything happened and it got so bad and the, what scared my mom was, you know, this, the suicidal things, the suicidal thoughts and stuff like that. And the, my ex-girlfriend, she actually contacted my mom about that. And when she was aware of that, you know, she was really worried, of course. And uh, she, she offered it to me. She offered me to see a therapist. And I wasn't, in my family, like, people don't, people look down on that. Like, most, I think most families, especially minority families, we feel like, you know, we shouldn't go to therapy. We're not crazy. We just got to deal with it. So that was a big thing. I, I had that stigma in my mind. But at the same time, I'm more open-minded than them. So I, I wanted to do it. And I went a few times. I stopped going when I started feeling better. And I, I felt like I was strong enough to do it on my own. But definitely when I was um, getting back up, getting back on my feet, it helped a lot. I mean, I hated the therapist, and all honesty, like, you know, I, I was definitely depressed, but I felt like I would tell the therapist, and I'm like, I feel good now, like, you know, this was throughout the sixth grade, and I was going to a, a rough school, definitely rough. I was going to Manhattan East over here on, in East Harlem, and, you know, I was getting so much homework and all this stuff, so I felt like there was no time for therapy. You know, it was getting in the way of like my own homework and stuff like that. And like, it was a huge shift from going from like, you know, school like PS 96 to, to Manhattan East. Workload was great, like way greater. So I just told my mom, I was like, I don't want to go anymore. And like, it came to the point where like the therapy was really just starting issues, I believe. Like the therapist was kind of like putting stuff in my mother's head and it's just like, it would create more problems back at like, you know, at home. So it came to a point where like I no longer spoke to the therapist. I would go to the therapy sessions so I just wouldn't speak. So I just felt like, you know, nothing against therapy. Um, I guess at the time, like I didn't feel like it was for me, but you know, I feel like it can help people if they don't have like, a, I guess like anybody to listen, but even then like sometimes you still need a therapist cause like they know more about like the topic and stuff like that. around mental illness and suicide 
it's 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 been considered since you know even before you know the dawn of this you know age in this country you know for for thousands of years you know stigma or mental illness has always had a stigma associated with it that people are are dangerous or violent or, or, or you know um, unable to be uh, you know unable to do things or whatever there's just so much stigma that's negative around mental illness that's one there's also shame you know, sometimes people feel like they're supposed to handle this all by themselves and they can't so they feel ashamed of asking for help uh, and also the fact that some people feel that you know they need to do it by themselves they need to handle it by their own you know that's a big one for guys you know guys oftentimes feel like oh, I can handle this I can do it on my own when the reality is they do need some help and so you know, we want to make sure that people understand that you know no matter what you know um, you can get that help but you have to ask for it you know there's an old saying that says you know uh, closed mouth doesn't get fed and so we know that when someone needs help they're not going to get any help unless they open their mouth talking to my family about suicide and they were you know scolding me and you know telling me that you shouldn't feel like that and you're crazy for thinking like that and you should never consider stuff like that because suicide has such a such a bad connotation especially with religious people it's such it's such a taboo that's why like by the time of high school I cut like a whole group of friends off from my middle school because like they were all getting on me and they were all like, like you could see them broken down you know when you see a person is broken down you don't you don't make jokes to like lower them there are certain friends I just don't talk about it with because they're just not capable of being compassionate enough to understand. And I think that's a big thing, compassion. You don't have to know how I feel. You don't have to be there. You don't have to relate to you know, suicidal thoughts, but you can understand that I feel differently. We have different souls, so we feel uniquely. And um, I have some friends that are really supportive about it and some friends that have been there. And obviously the ones that have been there are the most compassionate. They understand. And I try to enlighten everyone else to the struggles that people with depression and, you know, people that have considered suicide or self-harm have gone through and go through on a daily basis. And I try to open their minds more, more to it. If we as a society are more empathetic towards people with mental health conditions, depression, anxiety, you know, bipolar, you name it, we would be a lot better off. We would be a lot more understanding. People would be more willing to get help. There wouldn't be as much stigma. And so we would be a lot better off. But unfortunately, those that are insensitive don't have that empathy. They don't have that compassion or caring for people that really need it more than anything. 